How could we prove that a sequence like this converges? All of the action is taking place in the denominator, so it's not immediately apparent how we could use our previously proven limit laws for this one. But there is something useful that we might notice about the terms of this sequence. They're kind of like the terms of the sequence 1 over n, except the denominators in the yellow sequence are greater than n. As a result, the terms of the yellow sequence, since they're just one being divided by a greater number, these terms are all less than or equal to one over n. On the other hand, the denominator is always positive, so certainly the terms of this sequence are all greater than or equal to zero. But then, a sequence of zeros just converges to zero. The sequence 1 over n also converges to 0, so we may suspect that our yellow sequence squeezed in between two sequences that converge to 0 might also converge to 0. That's what the squeeze theorem tells us, and we'll prove it today. Here is statement of the theorem. Let a n xn and bn be sequences such that xn is greater than or equal to a n and less than or equal to bn for all n. Assume that an and bn both converge to L. Then, the squeeze theorem tells us that xn must also converge to L. I'll briefly mention I'm using slightly different notation here than I have been in my other videos where I would use set brackets to indicate a sequence. Both notations are common, so I'm just mixing it up a little bit. Here's a quick visual of what the squeeze theorem could look like. We have our limit L in the middle, and then L plus epsilon and L minus epsilon for some epsilon greater than zero. Then, since the terms an and bn both converge to L, and xn is being squeezed between them, it seems pretty reasonable to suspect that xn will also be forced to converge to L. It's a pretty straightforward proof, so let's quit the dilly-dallying and prove it. We will assume the hypothesis of the theorem, and we're going to prove that xn converges to L. You already know how we're going to have to start this proof off. Let epsilon be greater than zero. We, of course, want to find some number big N so that every term of Xn after the big Nth term is within epsilon of L. We may think, since An eventually gets within epsilon of L, and Bn eventually gets within epsilon of L, and Xn is squeezed between them, it seems like Xn would be forced to also be within epsilon of L. Since it seems pretty straightforward, let's just go ahead and apply the definition of a convergent sequence to An and Bn. Doing that guarantees us that there exists some number, say big N1, so that for all n greater than big N1, the absolute value of An minus L is less than epsilon. And similarly for Bn, with a number that we could call big N2. Again, this is because both An and Bn converge to L. So we know eventually the terms of those sequences stay within epsilon of L. In both of these inequalities, we may want to get an and bn by themselves, since we know how xn relates to an and bn. And remember, we can do that easily. This inequality is equivalent to dropping the absolute value bars, so we just have an minus l is less than epsilon, and then also attaching a greater than negative epsilon on the left end. And similarly, over here with bn. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that these inequalities are equivalent. Now, in both of these inequalities, we can add the limit L through them to get an and bn by themselves. So we have that an is between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon, and similarly for bn. Again, all we did was add L through both of those inequalities. And this, my friends, is all we need. If you don't see it yet, you will soon. 
we would like to be able to guarantee both of these inequalities hold, which means we need n to be greater than big N1 and greater than big N2. So for our proof, we'll let big N be the maximum of those two numbers. So our big N will be the maximum of big N1 and big N2. And then of course, we'll show that for all n greater than big N, we get our desired inequality, that xn is going to be within epsilon of the limit L. So remember, we're using this big N1 and this big N2 in our proof. So these two pieces here are not scratch work. You would include them in a full write-up of this proof. I'm just going to shrink this and set it to the side though, so we have some more room to work with for the rest of the proof. So by the work we already did, we know that for all n greater than big N, we are guaranteed this inequality with a n and this inequality with b n. The magic happens when we combine both of these with the given inequality that every term of x n is between a n and b n. So for all n greater than big N, we know that l minus epsilon is less than a n. Additionally, we know that for all n, a n is less than or equal to x n, and for all n, x n is less than or equal to b n. But also, for all n greater than big N, we have that b n is less than L plus epsilon. Now, we're primarily concerned with x n, so we could go ahead and drop a n and b n from this inequality. Doing that leaves us with x n is greater than L minus epsilon, and x n is less than L plus epsilon. Finally, we can use the same equivalence with an absolute value inequality that we did before, but backwards. Let's subtract the limit L through this inequality. That gives us that xn minus L is between negative epsilon and positive epsilon, and we know that's equivalent to saying that the absolute value of xn minus L is less than epsilon. And that is a pretty slick proof. We have that for any epsilon greater than zero, a n and b n are eventually within epsilon of the limit L. As long as we go far enough in the sequence to guarantee both of those inequalities, x n squeezed between a n and b n is also within epsilon of the limit L. So if a n and b n are two sequences converging to the same limit L and x n is a sequence squeezed between a n and b n, x n must also converge to L. Right